Hey, it's Zach Modi from Gastro Office. You know, today uh, during lunch, I had a chance to just catch up on some reading and I, I uh, picked up Time Health and there was a great article on bloating. And I thought, you know, I think this would be an awesome uh, time to talk about that. I have so many patients that come into the office and say, you know, doctor, I'm so bloated. It's been three or four months. Um, I feel like I'm pregnant. Uh, you know, a lot of days I wake up after a meal uh, and, you know, it's almost 30% of Americans struggle with bloating at some point. Now, for us in GI, it can be a little complicated because it's not always a, you know, this is the exact reason for bloating. And so for me, I like to break it up into different compartments, right? So remember, the GI tract is, you know, a contiguous uh, kind of thing in terms of it's all connected. And so from the stomach to the small bowel all the way down to the colon. So I like to separate it into three categories. Now, the first question I always ask about bloating is, how are you pooping? Because uh, if you're constipated or backed up, uh, that can definitely cause bloating and cramping discomfort. So that's my first question always. And majority of the time, once we address you getting to poop better, um, we can actually get that bloating and cramping to improve. Now, some patients would be like, nope, I poop every single day. I'm consistent and regular, but I still feel bloated. Then I'm thinking about other things, right? And so, you know, one of the main questions I have is, what can I eat that will avoid you know, cause me to have less bloating. And uh, we actually sometimes in GI recommend a low FODMAP diet, uh, which is a way to, uh, you know, reduce complex sugars. And so some of those high FODMAP foods, there's, you know, a big list, you know, some of them like apples, mangoes, onion, garlic, you know, uh, vegetables, things of this nature. So, you know, a lot of these are very hard to just take out of your diet, you know, especially if you're going out to eat with friends or family. Uh, you're not always in charge of, you know, who's cooking at home. I think, you know, dietary changes can be really challenging. <clears throat> and so what I tell patients is, you know, sometimes a food log can go a long way. Just making simple, you know, kind of uh, jotting down simple notes like, hey, today I had a chicken salad felt okay. You know, today, uh, you know, next day I had, you know, pizza didn't feel great. So just making kind of seeing if you can find associations, but, you know, we do sometimes recommend dietary changes, but um, I think, you know, first and foremost is actually saying, what are your triggers? Because they could be different than other people. And also it can be very challenging to, you know, take out some of your favorite foods, right? And so an alternative option could be using gas X or Bino. Uh, you know, something of that, very simple uh, to see if it can just cut down on the gas that's produced, uh, particularly in the small bowel. And so I think about, you know, we have something called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, uh, which can be just an imbalance of good and bad bacteria. So the way I think about bacteria is they're very vital for our GI tract. Uh, but, you know, sometimes you have an imbalance, meaning that there are more bad bacteria than good. And that can happen after an illness, um, after antibiotics, uh, you know, just a number of factors. And so um, if there's a lot of bad bacteria, particularly bacteria that make a lot of gas, um, they can take food or nutrients and after, you know, helping digest those, uh, you know, those foods down, they can produce hydrogen or methane gas. And that can cause a lot of bloating or, you know, uh, gas and discomfort as well. And so, you know, uh, when I think about dietary changes, I think, you know, uh, if you can find easy things to avoid, definitely do so. But it's not always that straightforward. And that's where, you know, sometimes a gas X or a Beano option is great. And if that's not working, we can also, you know, trial some empiric antibiotics to kind of reset the gut bacteria as well. Now, the last thing is, so we talked about the colon and the small bowel. The next thing I would say is the stomach, uh, you know, is another place to consider. There can be infections such as H. pylori, which, you know, we can diagnose via a stool test or an endoscopy. Um, there also can be something called functional dyspepsia, meaning that you get really full after meals. And sometimes, you know, we need to treat that differently, uh, you know, as well. And there are different treatment options for that. So, you know, I know that's a lot of information on bloating, but for me, you know, ask yourself simple questions. How am I pooping? Uh, you know, do I have any dietary triggers? Have you tried gas X or Beano? You know, um, is it before meals, after meals, just kind of those sort of things can really help you you know, kind of find out and diagnose like what's what's going on. So. Um.